Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer of space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. From ear to ear, written by Lords of Jupe. The humans are smiling now. Our race, one and all, we shared everything freely. Once we'd beaten and starved each other to our fullest extents, and had brokered hard-earned peace between our respective cultures, of course, not all of the original races survived the process, and they are sorely missed. Because hindsight functions so superbly when you're drying your own bloodied hands on the pages of the history you author. That nonsense aside, we should have roused ourselves to war and exterminate the humans when we first saw them. They were a blight of a species then, and have become something far more sinister. They are everywhere and nowhere. Because of our hubris and our devotion to what we mockingly called forever. Utterly unaware at the time of how shallow a concept that really is. Eternity is spending time with your sins and knowing the truths of your victims. It is what is in every mirror, every text, every vid screen, hologram, and answer link broadcast. And it carries your echo for what will be, as is understood, eternity. The humans, of course, were smiling when they saw us all. We greeted them with the electronic grand halls of our union. That pan-galactic glad hand fest that we couldn't stop congratulating ourselves over, having lovingly created it on the bones of those that we called allies, lovers, friends. Because that's how peace is forged. Or, at least, so we told ourselves. The humans taught us a very different degree of that lesson. They told us that they'd heard voices in the dark and followed them, and picked up the cues and clues from the few dead worlds, their occupants missing for some hundred cycles or so, and looked upwards and onward, continuing their journey through the stars and beyond them. They pieced together ships from old battlefield wrecks that we lay fallow in countless spaces, never bothering to monitor nor track them. Because when peace is free, the original prices paid for war are distant notions at the absolute best. The humans were smiling so, so brightly when we told them about our miracles. The glee was so rampant when we explained our longevity. Then our least long-lived race would grow to be a thousand years old at the minimum. Well, before the first ever mental necessity would develop, and even then, their own mind may self-repair and see it turned into an ashen memory, laughed away by the social faux pas. We didn't realize why those apex predators had such dignified smiles. Sharks, a species from their world, do much the same. And always, always, just before they'd eat. Oh, how the humans feasted on what we had to offer. They gobbled it up and asked for nothing save to experience some time and reflection. And we, of course, provided it. Along with some resource-heavy worlds that we'd long since outgrown. And their funny little culture seemed so desperately to need those paltry things of the flesh. Things that we had already long since born of metal and glass and wire and electric current. We'd laughed amongst ourselves about how they were so hidebound by meat space requirements of needing to build something other than a self-repairing satellite grid over a powered generator networks. Oh, we were so, so very clever. We did not expect what happened to happen, and that was our own hubris clouding our vision. We had taught ourselves about how peaceful we were, how dignified we treated each other, how we planned to enter eternity together as a united front, friends for all of the days that we could ever want or wish for, with no end in sight. Our luxury of hindsight, it seems, 
was the first appendage we'd removed voluntarily in our quest to be the best selves. To be the evolved form of whatever species was meant to be. Also, we dreamed and shared the dreams with each other, regaling one another of the tales yet to be told of exploration, not exploitation, of unity, not unilateral dominion. The humans kept to themselves for two cycles before they returned to our electric great halls. They showed us what we'd done and demonstrated their point so effectively. We began to understand our real loss. We'd outgrown death and culpability. We'd forgotten our crimes. We'd ignored that our transgressions were not echoing forward. They had been echoing backward, and that the ripples in the pond of time had lapped softly, softly, on the shores of the pale blue dot suspended on a beam of sunlight, an awakened and crafty ape called man. The species which had gifted humanity the power to rise above itself, we killed them, of course. We were cruel tyrants in those days, and exacted terrible vengeance for a slight that we cannot recall. No living memory of it exists, and our archives only note that we, as a unified front, had butchered every last man, woman, and child of their little fly-speck planetoids, and erased them from their respective ecosphere's genetic potential entirely. Because, of course, they had no place at our sides and we'd have nothing beneath our feet but the skies, after all. Our judgment was always so wise, fair, and kind. We'd said to ourselves so often, it was gospel truth. We were going to be gods and live forever, and the gods are kind and understanding. Courtesy of the humans, only part of that is true now. We'd archived our best and brightest first, then the next year, all the way down to the even our beggars and thieves, and become electronic entities, floating from grid to grid, and experiencing life on a new plateau, unbound by flesh and blood and scale and skin and bone, liberated for eternity. In those two years, humanity reverse-engineered our technology for beaming us from point to point, as none of us had a singularity hosted ourselves in one locale. Better to see the cosmos ourselves existing as data traffic, a tide narrower than electron and wider than any world. We were a wave aimed outwards at each other, networking in such an intimate way. We transcended everything except history. The humans brought it with them, and they brought a word with them, which summarized their grasp of culture, social elevation, economics, warfare, and history itself. Grudge. Simple, basic, unassuming word. To them, it was an instruction book. We soon found ourselves, one by one, moving in single-file beams, fired into the event horizons of black holes, slowly, and raced one after another, listening to each other's excruciating, prolonged death throes, and unable to turn ourselves away. We were being murdered, and slaughtered, and executed, and assassinated, and not a single one of us could stop it. Only listen to the endless shrieks of our compatriots and lovers and friends and allies as they were turned into cosmic noise foam. How meat space bodies, long since rotted and forgotten, might have prevented it. Maybe, if we'd had warships instead of electronic grand halls, we would have had a chance. Instead, I'm the last signal being sent out as a wave, not a beam and I am being sent to the final colonies of once proud peoples whom we believed to have been so thoroughly erased. And as per conditions of my extended longevity, I must repeat myself verbatim 
and say what the humans said to say upon reaching your respective hiding spaces. The monsters are all dead now, and it is safe to come home. Listeners, know this and understand me as best you can. The humans are smiling now. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Fudic Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Van 420, Lord Asrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.